The Orlando Magic are starting to get some healthy bodies back, and they're starting to get their defense back. Live from New York, it's Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is January 15th, 2024. My name is Philip Rossman Reich. I'm the expert and site editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip R underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, how the Orlando Magic picked up a huge win over the New York Knicks. It started with, yes, getting some guys back healthy. Like health is wealth, people. The Magic gets some key players back to their lineup. They get their defense back. And the Orlando Magic put themselves in a great position to win, but needed some late game grit to do it. We'll get to all that coming up on today's episode. But before we do that, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. No matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Magic is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. We've been talking about this for a week and a half now. Like, literally, the only thing that we've been talking about, and, and, and one of the things that we've been saying, is that this team needs to be healthy. Um, look, it, it, it doesn't take a genius. And, and look, like I said, after the Magic's loss to the Nuggets, or after the Magic's loss to the Thunder, injuries aren't why the Magic are necessarily losing, but they're not helping. So getting some healthy bodies back, getting Wendell Carter back, having Mark Hill, Fultz, Joe Ingles, and Jonathan Isaac all play, you're beginning to see this team kind of look the way they did back in November for the first time in, in a very, very long time. You're kind of beginning to see this team play the way we know they're capable of playing, be just dominant in the paint defensively, just protecting the rim, rebounding, getting some turnovers, just trying to just grit and gut games out. Health is everything for the Magic. Health is everything for this team. And it's something they've been missing. So yeah, getting Wendell Carter back for the first time since uh, January, since January 3rd, since the game in Sacramento, first time in five games. Absolutely huge. And he came up big with several big shots. We're going to talk about the late game stuff a little bit later on. But coming up with several big shots, several big stops, several, you know, he only had three rebounds, but several big plays in the paint to set everyone else up. He just makes everybody else better. The same with Mark L. Fultz. And I know people are still down on his shot and he didn't shoot the ball great in this game and still looked a little rusty and a little concerning. Um, a little concerning on that front, but you can see when he is at full bore, when he is able to get downhill into the paint, you can see how he makes everyone around him better. How how this team is put in a better position to win when Fultz is doing what Fultz does. And again, late in the game, Fultz came through with big shots and big baskets um, for this team and big plays. Maybe not big shots, big baskets, but big plays to help them win this game. It's Jonathan Isaac being a presence on the glass, a presence in the paint. It's Joe Ingles being able to facilitate and make everyone else better. These are players, these are good players that make everyone's life easier. And you can just look at the box score and see the effect that they had. No player off the Magic's bench had a plus minus, a smaller than minus six. For whatever you want to say about that stat, that tells you something. The Magic won those bench minutes pretty decisively. In fact, Mark Hill Fultz was plus 11. Cole Anthony, Wendell Carter was plus 14. Uh, Cole Anthony plus 18. Jonathan Isaac plus 15. These were huge minutes. Just having those quality players back, not having to lean on eight guys and, and eight guys that are, you know, frankly, again, no offense to some of these players, back of the rotation players. The Magic didn't quite have their full complement. Obviously, Franz Wagner is out right now. Mo Wagner didn't play. Anthony Black didn't play. They didn't have their full complement, but they got enough of these healthy bodies back. 
to play the kind of defense that we're used to seeing this team play. Make no mistake about it, as much as we're all concerned about the offense and, and the defense slipped in their absence, but wasn't this. The Magic before these injuries or during these injuries couldn't survive if couldn't serve couldn't survive because their offense just wasn't good enough. This was a game where they had a defense that could make up for their offensive shortcomings. They had a defense that could stand tall, even if they weren't making shots. The Knicks overall shoot 39.8% from four, 32.5% from three, 13 for 40, uh, 15 of 22 from line. So they didn't foul a lot, forced 10 turnovers for 12 points, gave up just 36 points in the paint. New York shot 18 for 35 in the paint. Um, Orlando was 26 for 45. They got 52 points in the paint. That is a huge factor for the Magic, something that's been slipping over the last couple of weeks as they've dealt with this injuries. The Magic didn't shoot a ton of threes. That's not their game. They're eight for 29 from three. Not a great percentage, but they were getting downhill and, and into the paint. What we saw Monday, and we'll get to some of the late game stuff. We'll get to get to that in a minute. What we saw Monday was a Magic team getting back to who they are. And look, for as much as you want to talk about culture and as much as you want to talk about being able to play the same way no matter who's in, the Magic are still building that and still growing that. Getting these players back, players that Paolo Bancaro trusts, that, that, that everyone trusts. Like how many times are you going to watch the Magic just look off Goga Batadze, open the three-point line, open underneath the basket? Goga's been great this year, but they trust Wendell Carter. They trust what he can do and what he can bring this team. And that's why he hit the big hook shot at the end of the game that secured this win, that made it a five-point lead and helped the Magic pull away for the 98-94 victory. That trust has been built over two years. That trust has been built with this team and with this group to put them in this spot and in this position to win basketball games. And so it's no coincidence, in my opinion, that the Magic got healthy, they got some bodies back, and they started to look like the team that they were in November that they went on the road, trailed by seven midway through the fourth quarter, and picked up a humongous win. Not just a little win, a humongous win. A win with potential playoff consequences. The Magic now have a 2-0 lead with the Knicks on the Knicks in the season series. They cannot lose the season series to the Knicks. Um, that's a big deal. Um, it, 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 it was just so good to have those players back and to see them make this kind of an impact. That's what this team needed. We could all sense it. We could all feel like, you know, this team is trying, they're fighting, they're grinding, they're trying everything they can, but they're missing key pieces. They're missing huge pieces to the puzzle. And that's what they got back. That's what they got back in Wendell Carter. That's what they got back in Jonathan Isaac. That's what they got back in Joe Ingles. Guys who just make, and Markel Fultz, guys who just make it easier for everyone else to operate. I've been, I know I've been kind of preaching it. I, I, I get the sense from the magic that there was frustration, but not panic. This is why we knew this day was coming. We knew that eventually these players would be back. And you hope that, you know, Wendell Carter will be back for the long term. You know, he kind of said after the game that he suspects that, uh, that, that knee tendonitis is going to be bugging him for the rest of the season, but it's just going to be about whether he can play through it. And he's kind of come to the realization, you know, not that his pain wasn't real, that he's going to have to grip through it a little bit. So, you know, there may be some stop and starting still with him, but, uh, but again, his presence was just so huge for this team. Getting these players back, getting them up to speed, seeing them look like themselves. Wendell Carter looked like himself tonight. Markel Fultz looked like himself tonight. Seeing those guys look like themselves just makes the whole game much that much easier, just makes it so much easier for everyone else. And that's what the Magic are hoping to get, and that's what the Magic are hoping to grow and build as they move on through the rest of the season. Now, this game did come down to clutch play. And, and what we're seeing is a team in this Magic group that relishes these tough games and these tough moments. Let's talk about the grit of this Magic team in the fourth quarter to close this one out. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at BetterHelp. Look, it's winter. It's cold outside. You can see behind me the, the beautiful the beautiful city in New York behind me. Um, even in Florida, we can deal with uh, some depression because of the weather. Whether or not that's the reason that you're, ha you're having those feelings, it's important to talk them out. And so around the new year, around January, we're obsessed with renewing ourselves. Renew yourself 
by finding a therapist, by finding someone to talk to, to help you through your problems this year. If you're thinking of starting therapy, please give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H E L P dot com slash locked on NBA. Today's episode of Locked on Magic is also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. The NFL playoffs are here. You know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Philadelphia Eagles will be kicking off in just a few minutes as I'm recording this here in, in New York. But there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like save, like live same-game parlays. You can find bets in their Explore tab. You can check out the Parlay Hub, which is the best way to find popular parlays, and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash on and make your first bet a layup today. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. We want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember to check out the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. You can hear from t- local experts like me, as well as our national shows covering every league to discuss the top sports stories of the day every day, 24-7. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel today. So... We love to talk about close games. We love to, to di- dissect how games are decided, even though they're not always decided late in games. But but this game was actually decided late. Um, this game, the Magic, you know, had a lot of the same struggles. You're like, I painted that last, that first 10 minutes that, you know, the Magic were great. Like everyone was back, but let's be real. I just told you that the entire bench was plus. The entire Starters were minus. Um, it was a rough game for a lot of starters on this team. The group of Jalen Suggs, Chuma OKK, Goga Batadze, Caleb Houston, Paolo Bancaro, they really struggled and, and, and struggled in the way that we've seen this team struggle over the last couple of weeks. The offense was just really difficult to generate. If the shot, if the three-point shots weren't going down because they they settled for a lot of threes, if those threes weren't going down, they were in big trouble, and eventually teams just feel like they can outpace that Magic team. You know, the defense is just a little uneven. Um, you know, Goga Batadze is really in, is starting to become a little bit more inconsistent on that end. Um, it, it was it was an issue, and so this was a close game that was ultimately decided in the final five minutes. Orlando trailed by seven with about six minutes, six and a half minutes to go, and it looked like it was going to be a real hard uphill climb. It, but it was similar to the Miami game. And similar to that Miami game, the bench really stepped up. This time it was Cole Anthony. He scored 10 of his 15 points uh, in the fourth quarter, made some huge shots to kind of keep pace with this team. And Orlando just made play after play after play after play. They they made the big shots that they needed to make. And, and again, credit to Jamal Mosley. He went back to his starters very, very briefly. And, you know, things were a little rickety at times. And he went and he quickly took out, some, you know, got his reserve players a bit rest, got Wendell Carter, got uh, Markel Fultz a little bit of break, put those guys in late in the game. Again, this is why they had such a huge game and such a huge impact on this game. They just made plays. Uh, Markel Fultz digging out, it, it, you know, Cole Anthony was the one that put the magic in the lead, made a lot of tough shots. Paolo hit a step and jumper. And then Markel Fultz just made two critical passes. Again, it's not necessarily about his shooting, it's about his ability to make plays and suck in space for others at times and to squeeze passes to people. That's why he's valuable to this team. He made, sorry, <laughs> all good. Uh, sorry about that. I'm, I'm recording here late at Madison Square Garden. Um, he made some critical passes late in the game to help the Magic get over the hump and help the Magic close this one out. Um, it, it was really impressive to see. The first one came getting an offensive rebound, kicking it out to Paolo. Paolo faked a three, took two steps, two steps in, hit that mid-range jumper that he is just so good at. And then the final play with the Magic up by three, that Paolo shot put him up by three. He found Wendell Carter uh, on a drive. Carter was able to go right into a post move, get a lefty hook in, made it a five-point game with about 30 seconds to play. That was your ball game. 
that's the offense. The defense for this Magic team, just absolutely incredible too. And that's where the Magic, you know, really won this game. Again, this game was really about the Magic rediscovering the defense and, and the defensive intensity that makes them such a dangerous team and makes them a team that is going to be one to watch here, uh, watch here the rest of the season. They they made these plays over and over and over again. Uh, and it was really about this grit. Look, Paolo was ticked off after the loss of the loss to Miami. Um, he was ticked off for the shots that he made. He he really felt that responsibility. And so much of it now is the Magic have options again. Like the Magic don't have to just lean on Paolo. And, and that made him play freer because late, you know, he wasn't playing the greatest game in the world. Late in the game, he had the energy to make shots. He had the space to make shots in a way that he didn't against Miami, really never had against Oklahoma City. He is a clutch player. We know this at this point. We've seen him make two game winning, two, three game winning shots already this year. The numbers actually suggest he's a very clutch player. We're going to dive into that, I think, when I get back to Orlando later this week. This game was about that grit, about that will to win. And, and this team was on a three game losing streak. They're down seven. They could have packed it in. That starting group was really struggling. They could have packed it in. And instead, they just got down and defended. They contested every shot at the rim. Isaiah Hartenstein couldn't hit. Julius Randle couldn't hit over Isaac or Bancaro or Carter or anyone else. They got down. They defended. Yeah, they got some three-point luck. I'm not going to deny that. Um, but they got down, made plays when they had to, and gutted out this victory. This is this is magic basketball. Again, like you look at the things that are usual indicators of magic winning. Points in the paint. Magic win that 52-36. Free throws. Matt, New York actually shoots more free throws than Orlando, but didn't kill them. New York was 15 for 22. A lot of free throw misses in this game. Um, Magic win second chance. Uh, Magic lost second chance points 15-13. This was a gritty game. This was a tough game. And the Magic had to find their will. They had to find their way. And they delivered. Plain and simple, they delivered. And that is that is what it's going to take here um, to to be this team, to be the team they need to be and make the playoffs. This is the exact win the Magic are going to have to have and have to find and, and, and gut out. And, and I think we're all confident that A, Paolo is going to be able to make shots or Markel is going to be able to make plays late in games. Like they have the players to get shots late in games when they're when they're healthy at least. And Franz is due back potentially Wednesday, almost certainly by Friday. Um, you know, by everything I am hearing is Wednesday. Wednesday is not out of the question and no one I talk to here says it, it'll be longer than Friday. Like to be perfectly honest, um, it's it's ha Franz will be back very soon, and we're going to see this team at full force for the first time in a very long time. Um, it's it's not just it's it's these are the games the Magic have to win. They have to be gritty defensively. They were back to that. Gave up only 16 points in the fourth quarter. Like this was an incredible comeback win, and this is a win that's going to pay dividends as we get into March and as we get into April. I'm going to get out of here. I want to get out of here pretty quickly. So we're going to go through the final box score. We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, we want to, but before we do that, we want to say a quick word about our friends over at Jace Medical. Um, look, it is sick season. Everybody's sick. You probably saw me wiping my nose. I think that's more being in the ridiculous cold of, of the Northeast. Um, I love it here. I love New York. I love, I love the cold. I'm not going to get, but it runs, it runs through our bodies pretty, pretty hard. And so the worst thing that you can do is be unprepared. If you get sick, if something happens to be unprepared, there's really no help, more helpless feeling than not having the medication you need to get better and get back on your feet. And that's what the Jace case provides. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among plenty more. This stuff can happen to any of us. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It's going to be reviewed by a board certified physician and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use code locked on to get $20 off your order. All right, let's go through the final box scores. The Orlando Magic do defeat the New York Knicks 98 to 94. Um, you know, I don't want to characterize that Paolo had a bad game. Um, it was definitely an uneven game. It was a slow game for everyone. 20 points, six rebounds, nine for 19 shooting. He was able to get to his spots, you know, a few turnovers here and there. Um, two of the Magic's eight turnovers. Um, you know, the Knicks did a good job denying him the ball, making it very tough for him 
to make make some of the plays that he's accustomed to making. But you know, fourth quarter, you could see the light kind of come on for him. Like he lives for those moments, and and I think that's the most important thing. You know, we're gonna talk a little bit more about Powell. I think later on in the week when I get back to Orlando, um, and I can go through the stats. Um, but Paolo, Paolo plays at an elevated level. There's no doubt about it. And he lives for the fourth quarter. He made a lot of big shots in this fourth quarter when he was not having a great shooting game. He was seven for 17 at one point, I think. So, you know, he was really struggling, but he stepped up in the big moment. And, and I think that's what the Magic can count on from him. Um, only other starter in double figures was Chuma Okeke with 15 points, five for seven shooting, four for five from deep. Really buoyed the offense in that first quarter. Those threes were huge. He had three of those threes, I believe, in the first quarter. Um, really put the team in a good spot to, to to compete in this game and have a real chance to win this win this game. You know, you're not running many plays for Chuma, but it, when the ball swings to him and he's able to hit threes, he becomes a really valuable player. Um, he was a late addition to the starting lineup. Uh, Anthony Black ended up ended up sitting. He was a DNP coach's decision. He was originally slated to start, but then Jalen Brunson was out. Magic decided to go with Chuma KK to match up a little bit better and proved, proved to be a correct choice in the end. Um, not a lot going on with the rest of the starters though. Like I said, every starter was a negative plus minus in this game. Caleb Houston, seven points, one for seven shooting, got four, four or five free throws, got fouled on a three. Um, Goga Batadze, only three points, really, really struggled. He got Isaiah Hartenstein in, in foul trouble, but just over rotating on blocks. That's kind of the big thing for me that I see from him. Um, and again, just if you watch him play, there's not a lot of trust in what he can do offensively. He had a couple of nice offensive moves. You know, he had one really nice offensive move um, that that got a basket. But the Magic are missing him on some dump downs. Um, there's, I think, just not a lot of trust in his offensive ability. To be perfectly honest, um, four points for Jalen Suggs. Another rough shooting night for him. One for eight. One for six from beyond the arc. Uh, just looked off. And even defensively, I didn't think he was particularly strong chasing around uh, Deuce McBride and or Miles McBride. Um, I, I didn't think he was particularly strong kind of keeping him out of the lane. And, and so just a really difficult game for Jalen. I, I am curious if he is still feeling um, a bit under the weather off the bench. That's where the money was made. When uh, Wendell Carter Jr. 17 points, seven for 11 shooting one for three from deep three rebounds in his return. Just his presence was just so good. He looked fresh. He looked eager to play. He looked ready to contribute offensively. Defensively, he was rotating really, really well. Again, the bench won this game. A player like Wendell Carter is the reason why the Magic won this game. Displayed an excellent, excellent, excellent game at the end of the day. Cole Anthony, 15 points, 10 of his 15 points in the fourth quarter, 6 of 12 shooting, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. He loves playing in the garden. He loves playing at home. He stepped up in, in a huge way uh, and, and made plays when the Magic were on thin ice. You know, the game was in the balance, and Cole Anthony brought the Magic back in and pushed the Knicks a little bit off the edge a little bit. Uh, just a great effort from him. Uh, and then finally, Joe Ingles, six points. Mark Fultz, six points, five rebounds, seven assists. Joe Ingles, six points, four assists. Those guys just add so much calm and presence to this team. I, I really like what they bring. And honestly, like with the with the potential for Franz Wagner to be back, back Wednesday, I really do think the Magic need to think about going back to their original starting lineup. You know, if I don't know if Mark Hill is still on a minute restriction. Mark Hill played 23-28 in this game. Wendell Carter played 18-53. Blue passes 16 minute minute restriction. Joe Ingles was at 2016. Um, I don't know if we're quite I don't know if he's quite ready to be completely unleashed. And maybe you're still managing his minutes a little bit. Um, you know, maybe you do have to throw Anthony Black in there a little bit, but I think I'm ready, you know, watching him play Friday. He looked more like himself. He looked like he had that bounce in that spring. He had another, another nice dunk in this game. Um, I think I'm ready to say, Hey, let's change the starting lineup. The Caleb Houston, Chuma OKK lineup is just not working. Let's, let's get back to a traditional lineup. Let's get back to Wendell Carter. Let's get back to Marco Fultz. Let's trust those guys that they can keep building on a game like this. Maybe you need to see one more game. Um, you know, we're going to have a long break coming up next week where the magic don't play after Monday's game until Friday. Um, maybe you wait for that um, to make some lineup changes, but you know, I think we need to start preparing and getting back to the lineup. We all thought we were going to have at the start of the season. I think they're, they're ready to take that on. Uh, Deuce McBride, Miles McBride leads the New York Knicks with 20 points, made four of 10, three pointers. Uh, Julius Randall scores 15 on five for 18 shooting. Great job on Julius Randall. I thought, you know, Batadze, Paolo, Wendell, Jonathan Isaac, all did a great job. They did a really good job contesting him at three point line. You know, New York, he made a couple threes in the second and the third quarter. That's how New York kind of rebuilt their lead, got it back out to 10, 11. Um, but Orlando kind of reeled them back in. The New York had that little spurt of three point shooting in the third quarter. 
Um, they won that third quarter, 26, 23. And then that was it. New York just did not find any threes throughout the game. Like even Dante DiVincenzo, he finished with 15 points was two for eight from three. He hit his first three and just like kind of, you know, thank, thank the skies for, for being able to hit that shot. Um, OG and Anobi, a really nice game, 17 points, five for 11 shooting with a very Tom Thibodeau, like 43, 44. They needed him for all that. I thought he did a good job, especially defending Paolo. Um, the magic generally did a good job though. I think just kind of keeping guys out of the paint, you know, just, just did a really good job in my opinion, just making them work to get in the lane. It was very hard for them to do it. There were a few spurts here and there, but just, they were very, very short windows and the magic were always able to kind of reel them back in and obviously make the big stops that they needed to, to get the win. New York, again, shoots only 39.8% from floor, just 32.5% from three. They turn the ball over 10 times. Orlando wins the paint 52-36, and that is all she wrote. The Orlando Magic defeat the New York Knicks 98-94. to That's going to do it for me, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. You can, of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Hit your tune in. Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of them based on the podcast to your podcast enable listening device for latest on the Orlando magic be sure to check out orlando magic daily.com you can, you can of course follow us there on twitter at o magic daily and be sure to check out my patreon page the orlando magic hub at patreon.com slash orlando magic hub and of course thank you all again for your support that's gonna do it for me the next time we see you will be the next time i broadcast will be after the magic game against the atlanta hawks on wednesday so no new episode wednesday morning but we will see you Wednesday post game against the Atlanta Hawks to close out this road trip. I'll be back in Orlando Thursday, so we'll talk to you after thir- talk to you Thursday night, and then we'll have a new episode Friday after the Magic's game against the Philadelphia 76ers. So that's our schedule for the week. I truly appreciate you all for sticking with me on that. Live from New York, uh, this has been Philip Rossman Reich of Locked On Magic. Until next time, we'll see you all again for another episode of Locked On Magic.